Kazakhstan's mountains are categorized into high and low mountain regions. The high mountain region includes the Tenshan Range with its two 7,000 meter mountains and several tens of mountains that are 6,000 meters in height. The Altai Range with its main mountain Beluha and Jongar Alatau. The lower mountain regions include the so-called Yellow Steppe or Sarayarka, covering an area of around 1 million square kilometers. Sarayarka is spread across the central and eastern parts of the country and covers the area between the North Kazakhstan Plains in the north, the Bitpagdala Desert and Lake Balhash in the south, the Turgai Plateau in the west, the Saur and Tarbagatai mountain ranges, all the way to Lake Daisan in the east. The length of the plains from east to west is 1200 kilometers. The width of the eastern part is 400 kilometers and the western around 900 kilometers. These steps are boundless, but on the horizon, the low hills and small mountains rise, partitioned by gullies and mountain trenches, and this place is called the Kazakh Uplands. Sararka is formed by sedimentary and magmatic rocks, granite, porphyrite and quartzite. This is an ancient and very eroded mountainous area that was transformed into hilly plains through weathering. In the east, the Kazalaraya mountain range rises, with its highest mountain, Aksoran, reaching 1,565 meters. The main peak of the Karkarale Mountains is at a height of 1,403 meters. The Kent, Chingistau, and Bayanawul Mountains are about the same height. What treasures are hidden in this land? Coal is mined in Karaganda and Ikibastus. In Jeskazgan, Karsakpai and Siak, copper deposits of ferrous and manganese ore. This area has no blooming meadows. The winds roam freely here, bending and shaking the tall grass, and a strong aroma of sage is everywhere. This area gets more precipitation than a desert, but less than in the steppes. Winters are freezing cold, summers are hot. And the slow hilled area is not simple to travel through because during high temperatures the human body can lose up to one liter of fluids per hour, which can lead to severe dehydration. The semi desert landscape is graced with numerous small lakes, and the desert itself passes in the form of a narrow strip along the south of Sararka. Persian gazelles, saigak, gophers, and other animals inhabit this territory. The mountains and valleys of Sararka also have mountain monuments carved out by nature, by rain and wind. In Kokshitao, among the famous sculptures there are the Camel, the Sleeping Knight, the Sphinx and Jumbaktas. In Karkarale, there is the Rock Toad, in Bayanaul, the Baba Yaga. Many legends and songs were written about this place. Sararka was the place that the legendary Kazakh musician, composer, Dombra player, and author of many plays for the Dombra, dedicated his famous music to. Korman Gazi had a great impact on the development of Kazakh music culture. His instrumental composition, Sararka, is considered to be one of his greatest masterpieces. The sun brazen lands of Sararka inspire artists and poets to create works of art that are dedicated to this area. One of the most interesting places here are the Ulatao Mountains, or the Great Mountains. This mountain range, located in the southeast of the Kazakh uplands, mostly consists of granite. The mountain slopes consist of slate stones, sands, and putting rocks. They are very stratified. Ulatao is surrounded by hilly plains formed by various clay materials of the Cenozoic era. This is one of the oldest mountain ranges in Sararka. It spans for 200 kilometers from north to south. The highest peak is of the Akmishit mountain, 1,133 meters. The Ulatao mountains are split by gorges. Pine tree forests can be found on the slopes, birch outliers grow in the lowlands, where there is greater humidity, steppe crops, sage and ephedra grow in the rock crevices. Bushes are found growing in the scree debris. 
These mountains have lots of springs and lakes, and lots of legends are told about the healing properties of these lakes. Scientists identified 617 kinds of plants in Ulatau, out of which 90 have medicinal properties. Every nation has its own history, and every history has its own heroes. As time goes by, the stories of the lives of heroes transform into myths and legends. The place where history started, where the heroes were born, is called a cradle. For Kazakhstan, the cradle is Ulatau. This is a geographical and historical center of Kazakhstan. The lower hills became the silent witnesses to big events that changed history. At least 20 Hans of the Kazakh Khanat were pronounced here in Ulatau. And Alasha Khan, Joshi Khan, Toktamosh Khan, Asan Kaige, and Yidige Batir were all buried here. Ulatau is considered to be the spiritual capital of Kazakhstan. In the 17th to 18th centuries, Arganate or Ulatau was considered to be the center of the Kazakh steppes. These places have important historical value and this is connected with the events that are important for national history, unification of the three Kazakh hordes. The Ulatau Mountains were the center of nomadic culture and the civilization of the steppes. In 1730, around 40,000 armed rebels gathered here from all the Kazakh Ruzes or hordes. Of course, the question of the origins of the horde system is the most complicated in Kazakh history. There is still no definite answer as to why such a hierarchical system of distinguishing the Kazakh tribes appeared, of the elder, middle and younger Ruz. Several factors confirm the fact that the consolidation of the tribes was happening due to external political reasons. Back then, in 1730, in the name of Han's family, the general commandment of the army was assigned to Abul Hayir, while the management of military actions was conducted by Bogenbay Batir. Kanjagale Bogenbay Batir, the great Kazakh commander of armies of the three Kazakh Juzes, who won over a hundred battles that he participated in. The national hero was born in 1680 into the family of Aksha Batir, who led the army of the Kazakh Han Tauke. Bogenbay Batur fought for the independence of the Kazakh nation in battles with the Jungarian conquerors. In 1729, the Andrakai battle took place. The whole Kazakh army was led by Bogenbay along with the young Batirs, Kabanbay and Raimbek. They destroyed the Jungar army, which marked the beginning of the decline of the Jungar Khanat. Burial mounds, necropolises, mausoleums of the Begazid and the Bai culture, cave paintings and petroglyphs remind of the past battles and history. The Terekte Aulie petroglyphs are assessed to be approximately over 3,000 years old, from the Bronze and Early Iron Era. The long flat residual granite hills are covered in them. The pictures reflect nomadic life of ancient people. This shows stories of the hunts, wild animals, and pictures telling about the cult of the sun. Petroglyphs in the Terekte Aulie are not just drawn, but carved out in stone. This is the secret of their longevity and preservation. They also have a natural system of protection. With time, the petroglyphs get covered with lichens, and not all pictures are visible. Only main groups of pictures are cleared for tourists to see. Look how well we can see them. This is a person with a bow. He's hunting for sheep. It is clearly visible here. And here you can see too, a little blurred, but it looks like a person dancing. And here is a lizard. Here is its tail, head and feet. Same as over there. The lizard is very clearly seen there. Shafts and metallurgic furnaces where copper, lead, silver and gold were smelted tell us that since ancient times, Ulatau was the center of Sararka. Nomadic Hans chose Ulatau as their headquarters. 
This was the headers of the Genghis Khan's older son, Rosh Khan, and from here, Batr Khan started his journey to the east. Mausoleums of the Juchi Khan and Alash Khan were also built in Alatau. Tohtamush, the Khan of the Golden Horde, and the Great Horde commander, Emir Edige, were buried here. Even the great Turkic conqueror, Tamerlan, who played a significant role in the history of Central, Southern, and Western Asia, commander and founder of the Tumurid Empire, left his inscription on the stone plate of Alatau Mountain, Alton Shoke, when he came here in 1391. The Ulatau Mountains are located in the geographic center of Kazakhstan, perhaps thereby showing their importance. And now, in the present days, in order to commemorate the symbolic importance of the Ulatau in the country's history, near the town and the Ulatau Mountains, the Monument of the Unity of Peoples of Kazakhstan was erected. On the territory of the Ulatau Mountains, you can visit the mausoleums of the Great Hans. Alasha Han is more of a legendary person than historic. Ordinary people consider him as the forefather of the Kazakh nation, connecting his name with different legends. Alasha Han is mentioned not only in Kazakh legends, but in the tales of other Turkic nations. And scientists believe that he's more of an iconic symbol for the nomadic tribes of the Eurasian steppes. The mausoleum itself was apparently made for one of the steppe rulers over a period from the 11th to 12th centuries. Scientists still argue about who is actually buried under the stone plate. The mausoleum of the forefather of the Kazakh people underwent a lot of restoration. Its top was rebuilt in the 21st century. Its distinguishing aspect from other similar structures is the presence of a ladder leading upwards and around the roundabout gallery. After getting up to the rooftop, just like from a sightseeing platform, you can enjoy the surrounding view and see the small necropolis that is next to the mausoleum. The Dombawil Mausoleum is a tall, over 5 meters high, cone-shaped building with a square base made of stone plates. The mausoleum's special feature is that according to scientists, it is one of the most ancient structures in central Kazakhstan. It is believed that it was built back during the times of the Hun's rule. According to another version, the mausoleum was built to honor the great musician and warrior Don Bawil, whose existence is somewhere between historical fact and myth. Some legends say that he was the appointed musician of Genghis Khan. Others say that he was the horseman who destroyed the herd of horses which caused the death of Juchi Khan. Another version tell about a musician who played the Khobuz and whose name is mentioned in the famous Turkic epos Oguz Namir. Another historical memorial, the Mausoleum of Joshe Khan, is literally five kilometers away from the Dombawil Mausoleum. Joshe Khan was Genghis Khan's oldest son and forefather of most of the Kazakh Khans. He especially loved the steppes of Sararka and is said his main headquarters near the Ulatau Mountains. Near the remains of the headquarters is the Mausoleum of Juchi himself, a building made of red bricks with a blue dome and a doorway with a raised arc. According to history, the mausoleum was built in 14th or 15th century by one of Juchi Han's descendants. However, some believe that it belongs to an earlier period, as the gravestone says 1227, the year when the Han died. The tourism potential of the Karaganda region is great. The Ulatau district alone has over 700 registered memorials of history and culture, 12 of which are of national significance and another 10,000 that are not registered in the state registry. It's hard to underestimate the historical significance of this truly sacred place. Events take place, peaks get conquered, rulers are replaced, heroes are born, and the Ulatau mountains remain as calm as ever.